Studio 2014. I'm sitting here with Konstantinos Kokinis, one of the designers of the game, and Anastasios Grigoriadis Grigoriadis from Artipia Games. Yes. And they're here to talk about one of their newest games, New Dawn. <coughs> These fantastically gorgeous pieces, which uh, most of which you can get a hold of in this lovely little expansion pack of miniatures. Uh, so, let's talk about the game. The game uh, is the thematic sequel of Among the Stars. We produced Among the Stars back in 2012. And, it's the uh, same world that we're playing It's in. the same world, it's a totally different game. It just continues the story of Among the Stars. Same characters, same universe, so players already have the feeling of the game, already know the story, and now they move on to a different game. Totally different mechanics. Uh, so let's uh, begin the game. So uh, each player takes a player board that they have uh, in front of them. Uh, so I've just set up one of them for now so that we don't take any more space. Uh, so this is your player board. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the bases you are able to uh, install on facilities. Yeah. Yeah, well, you need to. Oh, let me. Yeah, let me just. Place, place it there for it. Short while, yeah. Okay, so each player gets a player board. It's a unique alien race that only he has, and he has a special ability. Uh, you, uh, these are the bases you can uh, place on the facilities, and these are your mobile headquarters called MHQ. You already begin the game with one. These are really important throughout the game. They give you mobility and the uh, ability to expand. Okay. So. Let's bring this here. I'll keep it on the board so we can see the interaction, but of course it goes off the board. So uh, the game has seven different steps. We begin with production where, where we choose one of the three types of facilities we want to begin producing resources from. So we have economic, we have military, and we have scientific facilities. All right. So let's assume that I choose an economic facility. I place my first base there and each player will do the same thing. And that means that during each production, I will be getting one credit. Okay. All right. So the game lasts five rounds, and uh, so I will have the opportunity to produce uh, items five times. So, so, and then each round you'll be producing whatever it is you yes. see on the board here. So if yes. you so build these buildings as well, then exactly. you will see on your board Then my production is, is bigger, and uh, I get more resources each round. So, uh, after we do the production phase, we draw cards. There are four types of facility cards. The three we already mentioned here, which are the economic, scientific, and military. There's also hostile facilities, which could include any of the three other categories. So, okay. we would have a hostile facility that is scientific. Okay. So, each player will take four cards, for, divided as, as they want from the decks they have. Okay, so, so I could get like two economic, Okay, one military and one hostel. Uh, sorry, one scientific, one hostel. So let's say that this is my starting hand. Each player will do the same. And then we move to the next uh, step, which is the explore facility step. Uh, during this step, each player in player order will choose a facility from their hand. Okay, and they must place it adjacent to the alliance base, which is the, the, the area we begin the game. Okay. From so this should be here as well since the blue player also added a base and is now producing a resource. So let's assume that I drop my microphone, which I did. There you go. Sorry. Okay, no problem. Position. My fault. Okay, so let's assume that I choose this economic facility. I must place it adjacent to the alliance base. Adjacent uh, is means any, anywhere around what's so already on the board. Both diagonal and orthogonal. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, so once I place it here, I simply do the ability offered, and then the next player moves on and they explore a facility. But now the area has expanded, so they have more uh, slots they can uh, okay, so it place this facility on. Adjacent yes. to the no, main base. It's, it's, it's adjacent to what's already revealed. Yeah. And since we are uh, thematically, we're, we're kind of uh, an alliance. We are we are uh, friends. Uh, we explore together, but we win uh, as a race. Yes, because uh, there's. So it's 
semi co-op to some extent. No, no, it's it's no, no. not really a co-op. Only together, thematically, okay. it's a co-op. But, thematically, you're but working together. But through the game, there's okay. conflicts where you have the chance to uh, to to get res get resources and get facilities from other players. Okay. So uh, you're using the other players. Instead. Yes, yeah. you can do that. So let's assume that we have uh, our two players have placed these facilities, they have received their uh, benefits from uh, the text here. Uh, for example, uh, this allows you to discard a facility card from your hand, so I would have to discard another card and I would get uh, credits equal to its base cost. This is the base cost of each card, so that would give me, I would discard this card and get two. Okay, so each card has a, a unique ability. There are uh, lots of cards in this game, each with unique artwork and ability. So once we have explored our cards, then we move to the next step, which is by technology. Each player, each player's race, also comes with a small deck of technology cards. So my technologies are different than yours, and these are separated into two phases, phases A and B. So during the first two rounds of the game, I can only acquire technology from a deck okay. after that both decks are available okay. okay so let's assume that i choose to buy this technology i will have to spend one science resource and then place this here okay so uh, i now own one technology that i am allowed to use once per turn to indicate that i use it i flip it over and at the end of the round uh, sorry once per round i said once per game uh, and at the end of the round, I can flip it over again, it resets and it's all also available. Yeah. By having more than three, I also begin scoring victory points at the end of the game. Ah. Same applies when you build more bases on facilities and when you also buy more MHQ, you also get more victory points. So after uh, acquiring technology, a player may choose not to buy one we move to the next step, which is move MHU. This is a, an important step. When you move MHU, you are allowed to move it anywhere on the board there is a facility. Okay. okay, so empty regions cannot be used, but you can move anywhere else. So a player might choose to move here, the other might choose to stay there. Once we move our MHQ, we move to the, the main part of the game, which is the action phase. Each player has now three actions. They, can perf they must perform one at a time. And let's begin explaining those actions. The first one is that you can simply get a resource of your choice, something that you need, you may, you may need later on. You can get it by spending one action. The second one is you can establish a base. So all the first three categories of facilities allow you to establish a base. So there is no base here. I can now establish a base. I pay the cost, which is indicated on the lower left corner. I pay the credits, and then I'm allowed to take one of my bases and place it on there. Okay. I can choose any base I like. This is a scientific facility. I need to take a scientific base and place it here. But now I'm producing science research as well. Exactly. Okay, so as soon as I place my base here, there's one more step which is called adjust orientation, which allows me to rotate this card. And if you see here, there are some arrows on the cards. Some other cards have more arrows. This one has three, I see. Two. Yes, so this one has two. There are a few that have three or none. Okay, so I adjust the orientation, so I turn this card, and based on where it points, on which edge of the table, during setup, we put here some cards that allow us to get some specific benefits. Ah. So I choose the orientation, and based on where it, the, the arrows on the card point, I get those benefits. Some benefits are given right away, like these plus two tokens, which I can use later on. I place them on my board, and I can use later on. Sorry for the mess. <laughs> I hope it's understood. Uh, it's okay. We needed a bit more table space to uh, show it properly. Uh, some others are always on, like this one, which uh, gives me uh, uh, an increased defense when there's uh, war, which will come shortly after. Okay, so now, this way... Now, when these, when these come on the board, yes. it, does it go directly to... No, they do not come on the board. I just brought them on okay. the board so, so everyone can, can see, see them. Yeah, they yeah, stay yeah. there and I just adjust the orientation over them. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's established base. Let's move to Seize Control. Seize Control is a cheaper way to 
uh, establish new bases. I don't have to pay anything, but there's a risk due to, to dice. Okay. okay, so what you do there is, if you have a facility that is not controlled by anyone, you can say, I seize control there, and what you do is you add the number of uh, credits needed to establish base and the number of victory points offered, that makes four. I need to roll something above four to establish a base. Here is where the importance of MHQ comes. MHQ, for each MHQ you have adjacent to the facility you are interested in taking control of, you roll one white die. This is a simple die, it's one to six, but if you have MHQ on the facility you want to take control of, then you roll yellow dice, which doesn't have a number one, it has two sixes on it, so it's better odds. Of course, as you move on in the game and you buy more MHQ, you have the opportunity of rolling more dice and ensuring that the result will get you over the limit you need to pass to establish yes, exactly. a base. So as soon as I establish a base, once again, I place my base here, I do the orientation as we did before, and so on. There's a last case where someone is already on my facility, on the facility I want to, to seize control of. In that case, uh, that, fa that player will roll against me. I ignore this and now he rolls against me. So if that and was the case, and this is, this is the blue player, yes, is, this is the blue player, I'm the red player, and let's say that this is my setup, so I have two MHQ on adjacent facilities, that will roll a white die, that will roll a yellow, and the defender will also roll one yellow die for his base, one white die for his adjacent MHQ, and so on. The more you have there, the more dice you roll, the better total you will get and more chances to win. Uh, so we are almost done. The next step is the use ambassador step. We have these ambassadors that we can bring in to help us. These ambassadors do various actions. They can uh, give us further resources. They can assist us with, assist us with uh, seizing control. For example, this guy can be brought here. And when you seize control using this guy, you also roll another dice, a red one, which has only three, four, five, five, six, six. So it's even better odds. Exactly. Okay, so these do various actions. You can bring them in and uh, get advantage of them. Finally, you can buy an MHQ. It's also an action, you can buy another MHQ and uh, expand your uh, empire. And this is all the actions you can do. The final step of the game, of, of each round, is sending aid to the Alliance. Next to the board, we set up these ships that we can use. So I can pay these resources and get these victory points at the end of the game. So I choose one, I can buy it, and then you, we will open one more, you can choose one and buy it as well. And uh, this is the game we play for uh, five rounds. And after that, the person who scores the victory point, the most victory points from these, his boards, and mainly the facilities he controls, is the winner. As uh, he referred to, the, the facilities uh, have also phases. These are facility A phases. Yes. And uh, on round three, they will be changed with facilities change, more powerful, yes. uh, which is the B phase, round three to five. So, so that's the game. There's much depth to the game, many options. Each card might give you the options. They allow you to seize control during card placement and all that. Uh, How uh, long does the game take to play? Uh, it's one and a half hour to two hours based on the number of so players. Nice, long, and like there are game. more yeah. aliens here yeah. with unique with abilities. And how many players? Two to four players. Between two and four. Thank yeah. you very much. That Thank is you very much. New Dawn by RTV Games. Thank you.